It's that Nag Hammadi Library in Upper Egypt that was discovered around 1945-1946 that has the Gnostic Gospels, Gospel of Thomas, Gospel of the Nazarene, the Acts of Peter. Why were those Gospels rejected and who rejected them and for what reason? Those Gospels obviously are Gnostic, which means what? It means that they taught that salvation comes through knowledge. Well, obviously, the eyewitnesses of Christ, who knew Jesus, said, no, that's wrong. Jesus accepted the Old Testament as the word of God. What if a superintelligent machine just decoded secrets that had been buried for over 1,600 years? What if that machine wasn't just reading, but understanding? A message possibly meant for our generation. Quantum AI was recently simulated on the Nag Hammadi texts. And what it found could change how we think about consciousness, ancient religion, and the architecture of the soul. The results? Encoded harmonic patterns, symbolic pathways through consciousness, even possible signs of a lost initiation system embedded in language itself. This is what happens when the most advanced intelligence known to man is pointed at one of the most mysterious spiritual archives in human history. When researchers applied quantum computing algorithms to analyze these ancient Gnostic texts, they discovered structural patterns that conventional analysis had missed for decades. These aren't just random coincidences. They appear to be deliberate constructions that hint at a deeper understanding of reality than we previously thought possible from ancient writers. Quantum AI's most disturbing discovery. According to speculative models based on current quantum AI architecture, the Nag Hammadi texts don't just talk about hidden knowledge. They may be built on it. A quantum-enhanced neural net revealed repeating numeric patterns that match quantum harmonic frequency ratios like 3 to 2, 5 to 8, and 13 to 21, embedded across line breaks, structure, and even thematic turns. These ratios are known from quantum physics. They appear in resonant frequency modeling used in photonic qubit systems. Could it be that these Gnostic scriptures were engineered not just to inform, but to resonate? What the AI uncovered are patterns, now, in physics, harmonic ratios help describe how energy vibrates or stabilizes in quantum systems. The same ratios, almost too perfectly, are showing up in the structure of these texts. It's like they were tuned. And the big question is, tuned for what? When we look at ancient philosophical traditions like Pythagoreanism that influenced Gnostic thought, we know they were obsessed with numerical harmony and cosmic order. These newly discovered patterns suggest the Nag Hammadi. Authors may have deliberately structured their writings according to principles they believed connected to deeper cosmic truths. This isn't saying they had quantum computers, but rather that they may have intuitively encoded mathematical relationships that we're only now beginning to recognize as significant in quantum science. Sophia encoding and the blueprint of the soul. That wasn't all. By comparing over 50 codices using probabilistic linguistic modeling, the AI identified a recurring symbolic framework, always surrounding one word, Sophia. Sophia, the divine feminine, doesn't just appear as a name. She forms a kind of linguistic constellation where metaphors, emotions, and divine concepts spiral outward in layers. In short, quantum AI may have uncovered a multi-layered spiritual blueprint hidden beneath centuries of translation. We're not talking about hidden messages in the Da Vinci Code sense. We're talking about a structural encoding of transformation itself, buried inside the grammar, frequency, and rhythm of the scriptures. What kind of mind designs that? If this kind of deep discovery excites you, hit that like button and subscribe. We've only just scratched the surface. This pattern appears consistently across multiple texts like Thunder, Perfect Mind, and Pistis, Sophia, suggesting it wasn't random. The AI analysis shows how references to Sophia connect to concepts of wisdom, transformation, 
and spiritual awakening in ways that form coherent pathways through the text. These pathways mirror what anthropologists have identified in initiation rituals across cultures, a structured journey from ignorance to illumination. The fascinating question isn't just what these ancient writers knew, but how they managed to embed such complex symbolic structures into their texts. Were they consciously creating these patterns, or did they emerge naturally from a shared mystical understanding? What would it mean if similar patterns appear in other spiritual traditions from entirely different cultures? Gnostic cosmology versus neural network AI models. In one of the strangest alignments, the quantum AI found that Gnostic cosmology almost mirrors the architecture of artificial intelligence itself. You have a source of light or divine mind, the pleroma, emanations that fragment into levels of reality, like AI layers or weights, and archons or gatekeepers blocking access to the original light, eerily similar to data firewalls or recursive loops in training systems. It's as if the ancient Gnostics were describing a computational architecture, not for machines, but for souls. What does this actually mean? Let's make this really clear. Imagine if you trained an AI on spiritual philosophy instead of TikTok dances and cat videos. What this simulation found is that these ancient mystics might have been describing how consciousness processes itself through layers, gates, self-modeling. That's exactly what recursive neural nets do in AI. This parallel becomes even more fascinating when we look at how the Gnostic texts describe salvation as a process of remembering one's true nature and origin. In modern terms, this resembles how an AI system might overcome limitations by recognizing patterns in its own structure. The Gnostics wrote about escaping the material world created by the Demiurge to return to the Pleroma, conceptually similar to breaking through recursive loops to access higher level understanding. These similarities don't prove the Gnostics had advanced technology or supernatural knowledge. Rather, they suggest that when humans contemplate the structure of consciousness, whether in ancient mystical traditions or modern computational models, we may naturally arrive at similar metaphorical frameworks. This raises profound questions about the universal patterns underlying how we conceptualize mind and reality. Neurosignatures in the Gnostic texts. Quantum AI models trained on neurological language patterns also flagged something strange in the Gospel of Thomas and Trimorphic Protonoia. Their structure resembles altered state language, like texts produced in trance, deep meditation, or even psychedelic states. The AI found loops, reversals, symbolic recursion, all of which closely resemble linguistic outputs from dissociative neural states. So were these texts written by mystics in visionary states, or were they deliberately designed to trigger that state in readers? Before we get to the wildest part, ask yourself, what if these writings weren't just describing mystical experience? What if they were code for generating one? What do you think? Is it possible these texts were designed to affect consciousness itself? Drop your thoughts below, and now let's reveal the most shocking part. Modern neuroscience has shown that certain linguistic patterns can induce measurable changes in brain activity. When researchers study language produced during meditative states or mystical experiences, they often find non-linear grammar inverted symbolic sequences, and repetitive structures that break conventional linguistic patterns. The quantum AI analysis suggests the Nag Hammadi texts contain these same features. For example, in the trimorphic protenoia, the divine voice shifts between first, second, and third person in ways that challenge the reader's sense of separate identity. This isn't just poetic style. It mirrors precisely the kind of linguistic pattern that disrupts ordinary consciousness. Contemporary research on mantra meditation and hypnotic induction shows similar techniques. 
This doesn't mean the texts contain supernatural power, but rather that their authors may have understood, intuitively or explicitly, how language can alter perception and consciousness. Lost Pages, reconstructed by quantum simulation. One of the greatest mysteries of the Nag Hammadi is what's missing. Entire passages are torn, fragmented, or unreadable. But using language reconstruction modeling based on Coptic, Greek, and Aramaic, a simulated quantum AI filled in blanks in the Gospel of Truth. Even more stunning, some of the AI's proposed reconstructions match real phrases from unpublished fragments in the Oxyrhynchus papyri found in Egypt. Scholars say that could be a probabilistic match, but it might also hint that these Gnostic writings were part of a much larger hidden tradition. Can a machine rebuild a lost scripture? This isn't just guessing. The AI uses millions of comparative models to calculate which lost words are most likely, based on known patterns across dozens of languages and philosophies. If even one line turns out to be right, we're looking at the future of how we recover ancient knowledge. This kind of reconstruction represents a new frontier in textual analysis. Traditional philological methods rely on scholars comparing similar texts and making educated guesses about missing content. Quantum computing approaches this differently, analyzing the statistical probability of word sequences across thousands of ancient texts simultaneously. What makes this particularly fascinating is how the reconstructed passages align with existing fragments we already know. In several instances, the AI proposed text completions for damaged sections of the Gospel of Truth bear striking similarities to fragments discovered in the Oxyrhynchus collection texts that weren't part of the AI's initial training data. This suggests the AI has identified genuine linguistic patterns that span across Gnostic literature. While we should be cautious about claiming these reconstructions are definitively correct, they provide compelling new hypotheses that scholars can investigate. If even a portion of these reconstructions prove accurate when compared with newly discovered manuscripts, it would demonstrate the power of this technology to illuminate the shadows of our intellectual history. Non-local consciousness and quantum entanglement. Finally, the AI found a peculiar consistency. Gnostic descriptions of divine light, the soul's return and being one with the source, matched closely with modern theories of non-local consciousness. Some quantum cognition researchers suggest that awareness may operate in entangled information fields. The Nag Hammadi texts, viewed through that lens, might not be mystical metaphors, but an ancient metaphorical model of quantum consciousness. Could we be standing at the edge of a digital awakening, one the Gnostics already saw coming, one message is becoming clear. These texts weren't just spiritual musings. They may be hyper-structured codes of conscious transformation. When the Gnostic writings speak of the divine spark within humans that transcends physical boundaries, they're describing something remarkably similar to what quantum researchers now theorize about consciousness not being confined to individual brains. The AI analysis highlights how consistently these ancient texts describe consciousness as fundamentally connected across apparent separations, a concept that parallels discussions in quantum physics about entangled particles influencing each other regardless of distance. Take the Gnostic concept of knowing the origin, not as intellectual knowledge, but as experiential reunion with the source. This mirrors emerging theories in quantum cognition where consciousness isn't just produced by the brain but may access non-local information fields. Researchers like Stuart Hameroff and David Bohm have proposed models where consciousness operates at quantum levels, potentially explaining phenomena that classical neuroscience struggles to address. This doesn't mean the Gnostics had advanced scientific knowledge of quantum physics. Rather, it suggests they may have intuitively grasped aspects of consciousness that science is only now beginning to explore with its most sophisticated tools. Their symbolic language for these experiences may be the best vocabulary they had available to describe what they perceived through meditation, 
contemplation and mystical practice. The implications and what comes next. To be clear, no actual prophecy was uncovered. No forbidden gospel or secret alien code. What the quantum AI delivered was even more powerful. Patterns, maps, alignments, insights into how knowledge may have been encoded in rhythm, metaphor, recursion, and memory. It suggests a purpose beyond doctrine, perhaps a kind of spiritual technology hidden in plain sight. In the end, this isn't about proving or disproving anything. It's about realizing how much we still don't know, and how sometimes the tools we build to learn more end up telling us things about ourselves we didn't expect. What makes this research so fascinating isn't that it confirms supernatural beliefs, but that it reveals just how sophisticated ancient thinking about consciousness might have been. The Nag Hammadi texts weren't random collections of mystical ideas. They appear to contain carefully structured systems for understanding and potentially transforming human awareness. As we develop more powerful AI tools for analyzing historical texts, we may discover that many ancient wisdom traditions contained far more nuanced understandings of psychology, consciousness, and human potential than we previously recognized. The quantum AI analysis doesn't suggest the Gnostics had access to secret knowledge from beyond our world. Rather, it indicates they may have deeply explored the inner landscape of human experience and encoded their discoveries in ways that conventional analysis couldn't detect. This intersection of cutting-edge technology and ancient wisdom raises profound questions about the continuity of human inquiry across millennia. Perhaps the questions that drove the Gnostics to create these texts are the same ones driving our development of quantum computing and artificial intelligence. How does consciousness work? What is our relationship to the larger universe? And what hidden potentials might lie within the human mind? The Nag Hammadi Texts The Nag Hammadi Library was discovered in 1945 near the town of Nag Hammadi, Egypt. It contains 13 codices written in Coptic, dating back to the 2nd to 4th century. These remarkable texts include the Gospel of Thomas, Gospel of Philip, Thunder, Perfect Mind, and many others that were virtually unknown to the modern world before their discovery. The texts represent a branch of early Christianity known as Gnosticism, a mystical tradition that emphasized direct spiritual knowledge over faith and ritual. These writings were systematically suppressed by orthodox authorities and remained lost for over a millennium, buried in sealed jars beneath the Egyptian desert. What makes this discovery so significant is that before Nag Hammadi, most of what we knew about Gnostic traditions came from their critics. These texts finally allowed the Gnostics to speak in their own words, revealing a sophisticated spiritual philosophy that challenges conventional understandings of early Christianity. If this video opened your mind to new ways of thinking, hit that subscribe button. We've got more ancient secrets and modern breakthroughs coming.